achieve success in life, I believe we must set and achieve goals. The dictionary defines success as the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. It doesn't say anything about how big our bank accounts, houses, or vehicles need to be. None of that seems to matter. To be successful, what seems to matter is whether or not we are doing what we really want to do. I've been living my life doing precisely that. Not because I knew that was the definition of success, but because I was always intent on being happy. I still am. Let me explain. Many of my life goals and achievements were born out of escaping bad situations, boredom, and sadness. In order to escape, I had to create new goals, embrace new changes, overcome fears, take risks, and make sacrifices. Like leaving behind friends, family, jobs, and relationships. Without making such big sacrifices, I would have remained stuck and unable to proceed. From daily to-dos to major undertakings, we all set goals. The simpler ones we usually follow through with ease, but the more difficult ones we often struggle to achieve. Fortunately, there are things we can do to help us succeed more, even with our biggest aspirations. lifetime, I've set and achieved a lot of goals that would probably frighten a lot of you. Two character traits that helped me to do that were fearlessness and a willingness to try my best. I also don't pay much attention to the fear of failure, as I believe failure is inevitable whenever we aren't meant to succeed at something. It is sometimes what must happen in order for fate to redirect us back onto our life path. As for being fearless, that isn't a complete absence of fears, but rather the effective management of them. When I have a fear, I address it, and I remove it whenever possible. For example, fearing that someone might steal my credit card numbers with one of those pocket scanners, I keep my cards in a protective metal case. I still have to remove them to make transactions so they're not completely safe, but that's something I can't do anything about. Whenever I have a fear I can't do anything about, I ignore it. In short, despite whatever fears I have trying to stop me from doing whatever it is I want to do, I ignore them and I do what I want to do anyway. Fear is a lot like a giant sinkhole in the middle of the street. When you encounter it, you can just stand there petrified and hope you're not going to be sucked in, or you can just drive around it and continue on with your day. I was in my early 40s when I came to the realization that my greatest accomplishments in life had resulted from taking on my biggest fears, aspirations, and challenges. That realization inspired me to reconsider becoming a writer, an old childhood aspiration that I had been too afraid to take on. Having scored poorly in English as a child, I kicked that aspiration to the curb long ago, believing that I had no aptitude or talent for it. Another childhood dream of mine was to become a secretary, but when I nearly failed typing class in high school, that dream also ended up in the trash can. Later, I taught myself to type over 70 words per minute, and my dream of becoming a secretary was not in vain. In the Navy, I worked as a yeoman for top Navy officers, and afterwards as an executive secretary to top CEOs, attorneys, brokers, and more. With all of my success, I realized that bad school grades meant very little, especially whenever I was willing to learn and excel beyond them. The only requirement was a willingness to try and a dedication to learning and succeeding. At 42 years old, I realized that while learning to become a professional writer might be an extremely difficult goal to achieve, it wasn't impossible. To succeed, I would simply have to be willing to work harder than ever, educate myself, and learn everything, starting with all of the English fundamentals I'd failed to learn in school. The great thing about schooling yourself at home is that you can design and streamline the entire learning process to meet your own individual needs. You can create your own curriculum, schedule, and you don't need to waste time studying things you already know. You also don't have to take tests or worry about how long it's going to take you to learn something. Taking on and succeeding with our biggest life-changing goals can dramatically improve our lives and take us from wherever we are to wherever we want to be. 
While such goals aren't easy to achieve, they're much easier to achieve than winning a lottery jackpot. As a matter of fact, we can't do anything to improve our chances of winning the lottery, but we can do things to improve our chances of succeeding with our goals. One of my riskiest, scariest, and biggest life-changing goals was moving to the Philippines. After working in the United States for nearly four decades and never getting ahead, I feared I might never get ahead and retire in poverty. Looking at my life backwards and forwards, I saw that I clearly had two choices. I could keep doing what I was doing, working hard and trying to get ahead, or I could jump ship and try succeeding somewhere else. There was no logical reason for me to think that I could improve my financial situation by moving to the Philippines. I certainly didn't have a solid plan. With no funds to get myself off the ground, I actually faced a huge chance of failure and practically no chance of success. The only thing I knew for certain was that I would be able to live in the Philippines more cheaply. How I was actually going to support myself doing that was a complete mystery. But I didn't move to the Philippines because I was reckless and foolish. You see, at various times in my life, I've experienced psychic phenomena, such as when I was being led to move to the Philippines. I didn't trust that guidance immediately, but when it was so persistent, I swallowed my fears and bought a one-way ticket with what little savings I had. Miraculously, about a month after buying my ticket, I came into a small financial windfall which allowed me to live comfortably in the Philippines for nearly a year. When I started running out of that money, my friends helped bail me out. But instead of returning to the United States, I headed to Spain. There, I nearly ran out of money again, but I got two more financial windfalls that helped sustain me. Still, I wasn't happy in Spain and I was actually feeling pretty homesick. I could have easily returned to the United States and the job I'd left behind giving up on my dream of living in the Philippines. But I didn't, because I wasn't homesick for the United States. I was homesick for the Philippines. Returning to the Philippines, I was more determined than ever to succeed. I replaced my old computer with a newer model and continued searching for remote work. Six months later and down to my last $20, I finally succeeded in finding an online job. With a small income, my life got better. And within a few months, I was thriving. Stubborn commitment, undying patience, and perseverance were instrumental in accomplishing such a big goal. In 2005, I convinced myself that with commitment, patience, and hard work, I could learn everything I needed to become a writer, but I feared that doing so might take too long. I wasn't a young man, and after all was said and done, I would be a lot older. Also, there was no guarantee that I would ever succeed. I also feared that my childhood dream was unrealistic and might have been spurred on by envy, as in my heart I was yearning to become as smart and talented as some of my gifted writing friends. Closing my eyes, I searched within myself for guidance. While meditating, a very interesting mystical vision appeared. It was actually identical to one I'd seen as a young boy. In a dimly lit concrete oublier, I saw a cream-colored seed resting center stage on a square platform. I knew if I ignored it, closed the portal, and left, it would remain as it had all these years, completely unchanged. Reopening my eyes, I was definitely more interested in taking on this childhood aspiration. Yet I was a bit confused, as for many years I had thought I was supposed to be an artist. Now that I sensed that I was supposed to be a writer, I wondered if I had been mistaken, or if somehow I was supposed to be both. I also feared that if I took on writing, I would definitely be leaving art behind. Whenever something new interests me, I like learning about it. That's why I've built such a long list of skills and talents over the years. But still, I can relate to those who aren't interested in learning new things, especially difficult things. I also sometimes experience strong feelings of disinterest and not wanting to be bothered with learning something new. But I've learned that when I can push myself past those limiting feelings, the rewards of learning something new always far outweighs the struggle. Before making my decision as to whether or not to pursue becoming a writer, I researched and compiled a list of everything I would need to learn and do to succeed. 
when I finished, and I saw that this was definitely something I could achieve, I decided to take it on. At the same time, I promised myself that I would never give up on trying to become a writer, no matter how difficult or long it took for me to succeed. As I knew if I attempted to do this and failed, I would be seen as a failure for the rest of my life, not in other people's eyes, but in my own. Hitting the ground running, I began studying grammar, reading the kinds of books I was interested in writing, journaling, studying writing books, watching educational videos, and trying my hand at different kinds of writing, including screenwriting. As I had fully expected, this goal was the most challenging one I'd ever taken on. It seemed like becoming a writer might take forever, yet I never gave up. I also continued working the entire time to pay the bills. While I hoped for a day that I would not have to work so hard, I knew that day may never come, especially since I would chosen to become a writer. Like becoming an artist, becoming a writer was a dream of passion that wasn't necessarily ever going to allow me to retire or make me rich. But I believe it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Moving to the Philippines at 55 years old was another one of the best decisions I ever made. I was lucky to succeed and my life has been really good here. But moving overseas without adequate funds and a good plan for succeeding is not something I would ever recommend. If I could go back and write a sound exit strategy for leaving the US, I would write something like this. Get a good paying remote online job first. Save up $2,000 or more. Move overseas. Rent an inexpensive apartment or house in a nice, safe, and friendly area with good public transportation and reliable internet service. Save whatever money I can earn above my expenses. Keep building my savings to where I have good financial security. Personal happiness, solving problems, and setting new goals often go hand in hand. While I'm usually pretty quick at solving problems, the big ones can stump me sometimes. Whenever that happens, I sit down and start writing. Just like when you have a big math problem you can't solve in your head, you can solve it by writing it down or using a calculator. By writing my more difficult problems down, I find that I can solve them more quickly. After writing about a problem and brainstorming for various possible solutions, if I don't immediately see how to solve it, I score each of the solutions on a scale of 1 to 10. Then I either pick the one with the highest score or one of the high scores based on which one will make me the happiest. All throughout my life I've used this method with great success. Once, when I was feeling bored and unhappy at a job in Seattle, I sat down and wrote about the problem and what actions I might take to solve it. One of the solutions I thought of was to move back to New York City. Before I started writing, that solution hadn't ever occurred to me. When I wrote it down, I didn't even take it seriously. But when I scored all of the possible solutions, that one actually scored pretty high, making me consider it more deeply. It was a radical solution to my problem. But I decided it was the best solution because it would make me the happiest. So I set a new goal to move back to New York City. A few months later, I was living in one of the cutest little studio apartments in Brooklyn, right on the beach. Having feared taking on big goals when I was younger, I can relate to the fear that holds some people back from setting goals and succeeding. It's like looking at a really tall mountain and deciding it's too big to climb. Yet yeah, you know if you just put one foot in front of the other and start climbing, you'll eventually reach the top. The biggest thing that has helped me more than anything else to set big goals and achieve them has been loving and believing in myself. Not just in my heart and soul, but also in my thoughts, words, and actions. When all five of those things are in sync and consistent, I've not only been empowered to set new goals and succeed, but I've been unstoppable. I don't know anyone who is perfect at actively loving themselves all the time. It's something that we have to be mindful of and work harder at being consistent with. But perfection isn't a requirement. Nevertheless, the more we're able to actively love and believe in ourselves, the more success we can experience. Actively loving and believing in ourselves goes far beyond helping us succeed with our goals. It also inspires us to pick bigger and better goals, as well as increase our overall happiness. 
While making my morning coffee a few weeks ago, I realized that the white plastic spoon I was using and had been using all week was derailing my pleasure of making coffee. So without hesitation, I replaced the plastic spoon with a stainless steel one. Noodling around with such things might seem silly, but it's actually not. Possibly you have a favorite coffee mug or a keepsake that's completely meaningless to everyone else, but it's not to you because it makes you happy. A great way to actively love yourself is to surround yourself with only the people and things that make you happy. Very inspiringly, Rajiv Sarenda did that and shows how in an HGTV interview, to which the link is in the video description below. Setting and achieving goals can be a lot like planting a fruit tree. You have to wait many years for the tree to bear fruit. That's how it was for me in pursuing my dream of becoming a writer as after many years of learning and growing, I finally succeeded, not only as a writer, but also as a filmmaker, foreign English teacher, and editor. I live a very happy and stress-free life. Some of you might call it following my heart. Others might say I set and accomplish all of my goals. I simply call it being happy and protecting my happiness. As I've gotten older, I've gotten better at protecting my happiness. I'm also more open to whatever life throws my way, both the good and the bad, as I feel I can handle it all. I've found it simple to have a great life by doing whatever it is I want to do and safeguarding my freedom to do that by not allowing myself to get stuck in any bad situations, relationships, jobs, etc. I believe it's important to always have a way out, to not get locked into any situation. So if and when things turn bad, it's easy to escape and move on to greener pastures. Today, I'm more flexible and fearless than I ever was, able and willing to wiggle in and out of whatever life throws my way. Becoming a writer was by far my most challenging goal ever, but it wasn't my greatest achievement. Mastering self-love was, because that changed my life forever. It led me to erase negative, self-sabotaging thinking and pushed me forward to achieve innumerable goals and other self-improvements. To learn about how I mastered self-love and more, watch my documentary, How to Love Yourself. Thanks for watching. If you've not already done so, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with your friends. This is part of the Life Documentary Series. To watch old and new episodes, check out the playlist here on my channel. Till next time, take care.